love honor to our most magnificent and high God honoring uh, the clergy on today Brother Addison Brother Williams in his absence honor to you to our deacons leadership of our church and to you my sisters and brothers in Christ man it is good to be here to uh, bless God with our appearing. Uh, just thank God for who he is and what he is doing uh, in each and every one of our lives. We've just come out of a difficult week. Mm -hmm. Man, with regard to the weather, <coughs> it snowed in, it iced in. Man, there were many who uh, were ex experiencing difficulties with regard to the electricity, the plumbing. I want you to know that my heart goes out to you and I've been praying for you, whoever you are. Amen, there were issues at the Nolan House, amen. So I just know this, God will mm -hmm. take care of you. AC at my house went out this past summer. And I thought being hot was rough. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and being cold is just as bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of it hurt. All of it hurt. So anyway, I would praise be to God that he's got us to this moment. Things are thawing out and we can move around and amen safely. And we bless God for it. Now, I want to continue on with our series of preaching that we had started. Amen. We recognize that February is uh, Black History Month, and we honor God for our history and where he's uh, uh, brought us from. And so I want to uh, continue on uh, today uh, to recognize and to highlight uh, the fact that God is the one bringing us through, man, through hard times, through trouble, through bondage, man. And so we bless God while we bless our heroes, while we bless, you know, our patriarchs, matriarchs, uh, as we bless the martyrs who gave their lives for uh, our liberties, we still must bless God. Amen. That's what I want to lead us in on today. And so, I want to make another uh, installment in our series preaching out of the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 7. I'm going to get one, one verse <coughs> today. Psalms chapter 7 verse 1. When you find it, let us honor God by standing to our feet for the meeting and reverencing of his word. Psalms 7, 1, here's the word. O Lord, my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me, say it, save me. Save me. From all them that persecute me and deliver me. Say that, deliver me. Deliver me. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. We'll read it again. It says, O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that <coughs> persecute me and deliver me. They want to continue on in the series of preaching. Amen. Entitled, We Shall Overcome. I'm going to talk uh, from this subject uh, for just a moment. 
while in bondage. While in bondage. I'm going to tell me, tell you my points. While in bondage. I want God to know that I trust you. I want you to save me. And I need you to deliver me. Man. I trust you. Save me. And deliver me. Wow. I'm in bondage. You know, when I think about black history, I think about <coughs> all the components of our history. And there are many components that make up the historical record of the black race in America. And, and it's, it's interesting to focus your attention on those points that the, the different segments of our race to get us to this point. We have uh, our black, our, our race has excelled in science, it's excelled in, 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 in math, it's excelled in education, it's excelled in every facet and in every industry of our uh, lives. And so when we think about, you know, celebrating black history, it's just interesting to celebrate the components that make up our race. And there's one I want us to consider, and I've been thinking about this uh, for the last couple of days, that one of the components of the black experience is, is the runaway slave. Uh, you, ever, you ever think about those slaves uh, while in bondage, that, that, they, that they had a desire to be free? And not only did they have a desire to be free, there were those that acted upon that desire. You ever think about the runaway slave, the, the spirit of the, the, the runaway slave to never conform? You know, we think about that movie, Roots, Kunta Kente, to, to they, they chopped out the brother's foot and still he had a desire to be free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. His name is Kunta. Man, man. And so it, it's interesting to think about that spirit. You ever, you ever run into people who won't conform? Do, do, and it's, 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 it, there are times we look at it from a negative slant, but when you look at it from a positive slant, that's kind of where your entrepreneurs come from. Right. Huh? That, that runaway spirit, that, that drive to, to be different, that drive to, to, to not conform and excel in an area that God has gifted me in. Right. So it's interesting. I think about that runaway spirit that, 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 that they had a desire to be free, that they had a desire to be liberated, that runaway slave, that he had a desire to be emancipated and he acted upon it. And I think about it. What, what, what does he want from God while he's seeking his freedom? <clears throat> hmm? Well, David, David gives us the answer. I believe that that runaway spirit, that runaway slave, if he was here to tell you, he, there'd be three things that he want to communicate, that, 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 that many were brought up in the Christian faith, that many of the slaves were brought up to know Jesus Christ. That first thing he wanted want them to know, that I trust you. Second thing, that I need you to save me. And then ultimately, I need you to deliver me. Hmm? And in that, in that the cry of the believer today that you want to let God know that you trust him but at the same time that I need you to save me and ultimately I need you to bring deliverance isn't that what you're looking for in your life sisters and brothers that you want God to know that I trust you huh? save me and ultimately bring me deliverance. Well, this is, this is the cry of David in our text on today. This is the David uh, that's on the run. 
this is the day that, uh, that is not enjoying the peace of God and the tranquility of God because his enemies uh, have him cornered. They have him uh, uh, in some sense a state of bondage and so someone knows what it's like to be bound by the enemy. Sometimes your health can be the enemy. Sometimes that job can be the enemy. Sometimes uh, your finances can be the enemy. Sometimes home ain't right and home at times can uh, be the enemy. Those are sources or uh, examples of bondage that every now and then we find ourselves in. As some parent with some crazy teenagers if she's not in bondage right now. Yeah. So life has a way of putting the belief, even the believer, even those of us who trust God, even those of us who say yes to God, even those of us who pay our tithes, even those of us who do the right thing, even those of us who serve God, every now and then find ourselves in bondage in which we need to be liberated. Yeah. And so here, here's what David would have you to know. He's, he wants you to know when I was in trouble, first thing I wanted God to know was, I trust you. Here, here it is in the text. David said in verse 1 of chapter 7 of, of the seventh Psalms, he says, O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. I love this. Before he asks God to do anything, he tells God first, I trust you. Huh? Ah, before he asked God for salvation, before he asked him for deliverance, the first thing that David declares before the Lord is that I trust you. Uh, somebody right now, that's all you got. Anybody ever run out of money and all you had was your trust in God? Anybody ever run out of medicine, the medicine that you had wasn't doing what it was supposed to do and all you had was your trust in God? Anybody ever been in a, a bad relationship where you needed deliverance? You needed God to set you free, but you were still in bondage and all that you had was your trust. Huh? Oh, I know what it's like, sisters and brothers, to all, all you have. You wake up one morning, you ain't got no money. <laughs> you don't know if the little gas that you got don't make it back and you need you don't need it just to get you to work. Anybody ever had that kind of problem? You you got enough gas. What it, all it was supposed to do was get you to work. But God is so good, it got you to work, back home, and back to work again. And that's what to let you know. I wouldn't put my trust in the gas hand. No way. In thee, oh Lord, do I put my trust. trust you because I need you to feed me hey. when it ain't no food in the cupboard. Huh? I need you to make this gas go a little bit farther than I know it ain't supposed to get but 8 miles to the gallon but I need 12 miles to the gallon today oh Lord. In the David says huh? I want you to know well, and here's why I am kind of like even if he don't do it, mm. I want him to know I trust you to do it yeah. if you want to. Yeah. David says, huh, in thee, oh Lord, do I put my trust. Yeah. And this is what David, he counts on his trust to do two things for him. Huh. Trust in God it's going to save him. Trusting God is going to ultimately deliver him. I love this because David, his predicament kind of defines what life is. The, the believer is always in need of day-to-day -day salvation. <clears throat> How many of you sisters and brothers need huh, God 
working every day. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. David says, I, I need you to save me from all. I love this. He don't say save me from some of them. All of them yeah. that persecute me. Okay. And I want you to know, sisters and brothers, that in 2021, black folk are still being persecuted. Black folks still are being looked down upon. Folk, the, the folk that's celebrating our blackness and still thinking that we have overcome. No, baby, we are in the midst of overcome. Why? Because folk haven't come where they need to come. Look, sisters and brothers, David says, save me. From all, all of them that are trying to do me harm. David says, save me. Love that cry, sisters and brothers, because the believer can make that same appeal to God. You can cry to God and ask him, to save you. Save you from those things are uh, persecuting you. And I don't know about you, sisters and brothers, sometimes my money persecutes me. Sometimes my finances aren't huh, where I need them to be. But guess what? Those that persecute me, things that persecute me are designed to bind me uh, I can cry out to God for salvation. David cries to God because he had a real enemy. He had an enemy, sisters and brothers, that wasn't just in his head. Huh? Uh, it wasn't just in his mind. His enemy was real. And someone needs to know this morning, sisters and brothers, that racism is, is real. Denying that racism doesn't exist doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Means, sisters and brothers, that you are a candidate for salvation. Well, David, we're here to tell you, he won't you to know that I trust in the Lord. I trust him to save me. Save me, sisters and brothers, uh, from what I'm going through. But, but how many of you know, sisters and brothers, that trouble, it don't have to last always. Sisters and brothers, God can ultimately bring you out of what it is. Huh? that he's saving, priest Nolan, that he's saving you from. Look, sisters and brothers, God can change your circumstances. David says, God, I don't need just a temporary fix. I don't want to just be caught up in day-to-day -day salvation. No, he cries out to God and says, ultimately, God, I need you to fix this. Now, anybody ever cried out to God in a moment and he fixed it only for a moment? Huh? Only for you to go back into what you, he brought you out of? But God has the power of sisters and brothers to bring about permanent deliverance. In other words, those that have been hindering you don't always have to be a hindrance. Those that have always been persecuting you won't always persecute you. Those that have always put you down and didn't support you don't, won't always be there to play that role. No, sisters and brothers, God's got the power to fix it. And I'm a witness this morning, sisters and brothers, that God indeed will bring deliverance. 
You just have to give him a little time. Yeah, you have to be patient and wait on the Lord. And so there are times that uh, God will allow you to be in bondage. There are times when God will sit back and allow your enemies to prevail. Mm -hmm. God, yes, he will uh -huh, allow the ones that are persecuting you to reign over you for a little while. If David was here to tell you, he would tell you that the hell hounds were on his tracks. Uh -huh. And they were trying to scandalize and wreck his reputation. Uh -huh. But while David was in bondage, you hear him crying out to the Lord. He cries out to the Lord. I may be in bondage, but I want you to know that I trust you. I'm putting all of my trust in you. I trust you to handle me well. I trust you to hold me in the palm of your hand. I trust you that when I run out of strength, that you will give me your strength. Have I got a witness? Anybody ever tell the Lord, I trust you. I ain't got enough money, but I trust the little bit that I got. I'm going to put it in your hands. If there anybody here that will testify, there have been times I didn't feel well in my body, but I pushed on anyway because I trust the Lord. Have I got a witness? I got to close this thing. But what will your trust give you when you put all of your trust in the Lord? One of the things that you will be able to count on is God saving you. When all of your trust is in the Lord, you can count on him to save you. Is there anybody here that God ever saved you? He saved, he saved you. He saved you out of that bad relationship. He saved you from that financial dilemma. He saved you from that problem on that job. He saved you from that matter of strife. Have I got a witness? But I got one more thing that trust will get you. Trust will get you permanent deliverance. Have I got a witness? Is there anybody here that can testify that not only did God save me, He delivered me on the other side of the Red Sea. Yes, I thank God that He delivered us. He delivered me one Friday night at Calvary's cross. He brought us permanent deliverance. The reason why I call it permanent is because Adam couldn't do it. Noah couldn't do it. Moses couldn't do it. David couldn't do it. Ezekiel couldn't do it. Solomon couldn't do it. Hezekiah couldn't do it. Oh, my sin. God. 
position of righteousness where we speak bold declarations in your presence. First say thank you because you've been wonderful, you've been kind, you've been loving, you've been trusted. You're worth it. You're worth our trust. You're worth us putting all of our hopes, all of our desires in you. You're worth it. For you have the power to bring about deliverance. So bless now what you're doing, that great work that you're wrought in all of our lives. I pray now, God, forth and declare how thankful and grateful that we are. Our health, our strength, God, our minds. We think clearly, we see clearly. Thank you, Master. But bless us. Bless us in the midst of all our bondage. All things, all the things of God, we as a race still find ourselves bound by the times that we're in, bound by the climate of racism, bound by the climate of oppression, still being denied civil rights in 2021. So God, we're still in bondage in certain aspects. While we're in bondage, God, we need you to keep saving us. While we're in bondage, God, we need you to keep delivering us. But all one now pray for all our dangers. So we love the praise all the name. Remember our church. All of what she is and all of what she shall become. I pray, Master, for her, every member, every senior person, every young person, every person in between. On the day, God, remember our ministries. Keep them strengthened, God, till we'll all be able to meet again. God bless all that you do through the Paradise Church. Bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it. Not only what we do our output, but our input, what we give, we bless you for it. We thank you for every gift that God, we declare yours. We love and praise all the name. More than anything, we pray that the outcome of it all be in accordance with your will. For you are our strength and our redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we ask it all. All the children of God say amen, amen, amen.